Hello, my name is Aaron Hall. I'm 27 years old. I am from Ohio, but I live in Los Angeles. Actually, I am in Ohio right now, and this is the first time I've been to Ohio in many years. I was seeking therapy because Ohio, the state of Ohio, was contaminated. Um, so I wore extra clothes that I could throw away before I go back to LA so I don't contaminate my apartment. Um, I threw away um, shoes and stuff in Los Angeles because my brother went to my mom's house that is contaminated in Ohio that I won't go to um, and walked around LA so certain places in LA are were, are were contaminated to me and I actually threw away my shoes because I stepped where he stepped because he went to my mom's house he went to my mom's house and, and brought the contamination to Los Angeles and I stepped where he stepped so I had to throw my shoes away and clothes away and my girlfriend my actually my brother um, I, don't, I don't fly I don't like to fly so my brother actually came flew from Ohio, my other brother, I have two other brothers, m multiple brothers that flew from o Ohio to Los Angeles to pick me up. He picked me up and flew back to Ohio because I have really bad anxiety. And he, 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 uh, once he got to Ohio, you know. All right, Aaron, Aaron, uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Elyria, Ohio. Well, outside uh, Cleveland, pretty much. Well, it's like a small suburb outside of Cleveland. Okay. Tell me about your family growing up. Um, family growing up, I was adopted. Um, I was adopted at the age of, well, I was in, in and out of foster care. And then I was officially adopted at the age of five. And, um, and I was uh, homeschooled. And... Um, and my mom took me out of public school at an early age because I had a lot of, there was a lot of problems she, she saw in me and she knew that I wouldn't be able to function in school correctly. And then she, whole school, she homeschooled us while, um, while doing nursing. Hmm. How would you describe your childhood? Um, difficult. <laughs> you lost your biological parents or they lost you? Yes. Uh, she, they, they, they lost, well, we got taken away from them because of a lot of violent stuff. Um, uh, and, uh, cause the, a lot of like police will call, like, police will call it. And, um, a lot of stuff was happening, um, in that household, um, that, um, that's why we were, we were taken out. Violence towards you or towards the, the Oh, towards me, towards me and my, uh, my blood biological mom. Um, and we were kept and our, well, I don't want to say things incorrect. We're kept in things, we're kept inside the room, locked usually. Well, my brothers were, and then sometimes, oh, it kind of go off and on. It's hard, it's, it's hard, kind of hard. I guess I'm explaining it correctly, but yeah, we were like locked in there pretty much. Hmm. Um, and we were, uh, so a lot of stuff was going on in and out um, in the household. So that's why, and then more police would be, would be called, um, and then we'd be going to church. Um, so th then they would see like, they would, uh, they would, they would kind of figure out eventually there was stuff going on in the house. So then they, uh, um, so yeah, then, you know, um, you know, more, you know, kind of in our foster care is until the point where we got adopted. And, and the family that adopted you was, was, was a better family? Uh, no, the, the family I have now. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Yeah. How, how old are you now? I'm 27. 27. Yep. You went through high school? Uh, yes. Or homeschooled. I went homeschooled? to, yeah, homeschooled. Um, and then I, yeah, homeschooled. And then, uh, yeah, homeschooled. So, so you are OCD? I well, diagnosed with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> what, what kind of stuff were you diagnosed with? I was diagnosed with, um, OCD, FAS, FASD, which is fetal alcohol, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, and then autism. Hmm. Those are third and anxiety disorder. Yeah. And I'm sure that collection of the well, <laughs> they, they're, they, they the collection a, of things that don't make sense is a collection of it all. It all. Um, it doesn't. It, it's hard because you had the OCD stuff that it's like a whole different brain part of your brain where you, where you can't touch certain things or this is contaminated or you know. Uh, or you can't be around, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you, it, 
you know, you have intrusive thoughts. So you have so much going on with that side. Then you have the autism part where you got to, you know, where you are not good at communication. That's what I have. Not, I'm not, that's why I beat, as I'm told a lot, my communication skills isn't great. Um, social interaction isn't great. And uh, stuff like that. So you have that side where, you know, I have a trouble understanding social cues and reading a situation correctly. So you have all this stuff. That, so it's like two. And then the, when you have those two things happening, um, it's like, it's, it's almost like, you know, they're not, they're not good together at all. Yeah. And it makes your, your life difficult. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, very difficult. I can, yeah, very, very, very difficult because there's a lot of, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things that makes it difficult. It's hard for me to hold a job. It's hard for me to keep friends. I can, you know, it's, I can, I'll make a friend, then I'll say something offensive. And then I'll realize later on that, well, you're just being mean, you know, but it's hard to realize when I'm being mean, when I don't really recognize it. Hmm. And there's not really any medications or treatments? No, I was so, well, I was on Zoloft for my OCD um, at an early age. Did that help? <laughs> it helped. It helped. It helped me, like, it made me not think, pretty much. It helped me not think. It helped me, like, and that was dedicated, does more towards OCD. And that helped me, like, function in a way that I could touch things, and I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Um, and not have the intrusive thoughts that I would have. Like it would just, it would just fix things. But it, it also kind of like made things bad because it would like kind of wipe up my memory in a way. Um, and then I, because um, as I got older, like you know, like I think I started, I got back in Zoloft when I was um, about two and a half years, about two years ago, two and a half years ago is, and I got sick from it. I got, I got sick from it. I was hallucinating. So I was just like. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna. I can't do medication anymore. So I stopped completely the medication. And I've been just doing. Um, uh, I've been seeing a psychologist. I've been seeing like I've been going. I went to a therapist. You know, I've been just working on just talking instead of uh, instead of medication. Is there right. anything that that helps you? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that help me. Like, th- th- I mean, there's things I do like re- re- um, educational, no educational. Um, like skateboarding helps me, um, writing helps me, stuff like that. Hmm. And emotionally, what is it? What does it do to you? Do you, do you get depressed, or you're, you're already have anxiety from? Oh, I have really bad anxiety. I was told that I have like a pretty much severe anxiety, which is like you know, I, I and it's it's just like every, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just I get panic attacks a lot. What what, what kind of things trigger it? I don't know. No, I don't know actually, because I actually before I came here, because I, 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 I'm from Ohio, but I, I've been living, I've been staying in Ohio for the last like six months because a lot of stuff was happening. My mental health was very, very bad, very, very bad. Um, so I needed to get help. I was staying, I was living out here in LA, got evicted from my apartment, and then um, went, and I just trying to get help in Ohio with my family and stuff. Um, so. Now it's kind of like, um, wait, I forgot what you said, actually. I completely forgot what you just asked me. <laughs> it's okay. So, I mean, w- which of these disorders is, is the most troubling for you? Autism. Autism. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's because it, it, it holds me back from, um, it, makes my, it makes me not able to figure out situation correctly and holding a job correctly getting everyone getting mad at me um and that's what makes things very difficult how, how, would, you, how would you define autism um define it i i think for me it's like one of those things that it's like um I don't know, actually. It, 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 it seems to affect different people differently. Well, for me, it affects me um, if uh, communication-wise. If, if it affects me communication-wise, and it makes and for for my family or for my friends, I am always told that I'm rude. I'm always told that I'm rude, and my girlfriend actually had to stop taking me on to friends because she was like, "Aaron, you say whatever is on your mind. You just say things. You just, you just say things." You know stuff like that, and it's true. I will just say things. You know, you won't, it, you won't police yourself. No, I, I just, yeah, I, I kind of like if I have a que- if it pops in my head and I and I want another question, I will ask the question. You know, and I and that's the thing, and, I, and I, it's hard to hold back from it because it's like then I will think and think about that question until until I figure out the question to the answer. Like I, I mean, the answer to the question. Like I need to know the answer. 
So you end up alienating people that you don't want to alienate. Um, well, it's like, well, well, it's I, maybe I'm wording it right. I'm not sure, but it's like, it's like you know, if you want to know if, like, I'll give you an example. It's like if someone's like, oh, at my work, it's probably it's a good example. There was a there was a, uh, a girl at my work, and I thought she was, uh, I couldn't tell if she was a trans or not, and I was like. Now, now I'm thinking like, well, what if I thought she was attractive? Does that make me gay? Now this is the OCD stuff. Now it's the OCD stuff. Now I'm overthinking. I'm thinking, 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 thinking. Like, oh, wait, is that does that make me gay? Then if I if I thought she was attractive, wait, but I have, wait, I have a girlfriend, so that means I'm cheating. Wait a second. Wait a second. My mind is going crazy, crazy, crazy. And then I and then I have to know the answer. So then I'm like, and then and then I'm, then I'm thinking like, well, crap. I. No, I, I I know a student asked a question. I shouldn't walk up and ask. I shouldn't walk up and ask her. I know it's inappropriate. So instead, I want to ask the manager instead. And I, you know, then then she told me no, and I was like, okay. Now I'm like, okay. So if I did think she's attractive, if I did, doesn't mean I'm gay. So it's like it's like stuff, it's stuff like that. That makes if that makes sense. And yeah, does this <laughs> does this ruin your life? Oh yes, it does. Oh yeah, I I think it does. I mean, uh, it. it well, it's it's hard to it's it, yes, it does it 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 does in in a lot of different ways because it um it controls my life in just you know friendships wise you know and you know just just you know just like um in the world I, I you know like my like like it's almost like because I see when I, the, when, I, when I see my psychologist and my you know and we're in a room together it's almost like it's like I have, it's like I'm, I, I have, there's no way I can function in this world without help, pretty much. It's like, that's how things are. Once I'm by myself and I'm trying to figure things out, it fall, everything falls apart because I can't keep, I can't keep track of things. I can't, I can't, uh, how do I word it? I can't, um, I can't figure situations out pretty much. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much it. I can't figure things out unless someone's telling me what to do. Or if I have a certain goal, I can do it. Like like right now, I'm writing a book. Um, like so, like right now, I'm writing a book, and I can get that goal done. And but everything else, oh, and music. I'll give you an example. I can play the piano. I can if I if I want to learn a song, I will learn that song. Or if I if I, you know, I want to learn an instrument, I will learn the instrument, and I can do that very very uh, correctly. I feel like. But when it comes to like you know, walk in the room, shut off the light behind you. I will have trouble doing that because I'll completely just forget. It's stuff like that. It's little things like that. Like, you know, don't wear your shoes in the house. And I wear my shoes in the house because I completely forget. I have a very bad memory. I, I, I have a very good long-term memory, very bad short-term memory. Very often people who have a uh, disability, let's call it um, like these that you've described, they have something else in their personality or in their their, their wheelhouse that is you know a strength something that yeah. they're very good at are there things that you're very good at skateboarding writing and music music yeah those are the, those are the those three things and i those are the three things i know that i i i can um that i feel like i'm i'm i don't like to say good because i feel like it's bragging but i'm decent at i can do it i can do it and those things i know that i bring me joy and i know that i can i can execute it correctly i'll bet you there are a lot of very accomplished artists, musicians, whatever that um, that might be autistic, but they uh, they excel at something and they just apply themselves towards that. Yeah, and that's what makes things actually difficult for me because it's like I need to be able to excel in regular life stuff, but I can't. That's a problem. Like right now, where I, I can't, I I have really bad holding a job. So right now, I'm trying to. We're waiting on my SSI. We're trying to get SSI in order because. We know that I I can't I can't uh, working a job for me is very difficult because and you know and and, it's, and the thing that's what makes it hard because and I told my mom that we and my mom were talking about this and we were, I was just like I you know I was like told her I wish I was completely like completely like disabled completely pretty much because it makes it harder when I look snor when I look normal and I'm I'm put in that ca I, I, I'm put there and I can't figure it out. And then I was like, well, why can't you figure it out? You look like you're, you're normal. You know, like why you look normal. Why, why can't you figure it out? And I can't, you know, that's, that, that's what makes things very, very difficult. And you have in that category of like, well, do it, you know, when you can't do it. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think people don't understand about 
autism, OCD. Some of these well, things. I think people don't understand with OCD is that it's it's very a lot of people I've hear will say, "Oh, I'm a little OCD is." I don't think OCD is very very life controlling, and I know everyone has a, their own different like, like some some are severe, some are not severe. Um, with, in my case, it's severe, but I feel like with people who have OCD, they um, um, I was going to say, it uh, makes things more, uh, it makes things difficult, definitely. What, what kind of, every, every OCD story I hear is like, there's always some peculiar thing that they obsess over. What, what kind of things do you focus on? Well, contamination. Contamination. Um, worrying about getting C. <laughs> Why well, don't I? And I'm glad I'm open about that now. Like, you know, I, I will say it. I will say it. I'm worried about getting gosh, man. C. Getting what? C. Cancer. C A N C E R. Oh, you're afraid to say oh, that. Oh my gosh, yeah. I huh? I try to keep that out of my mind, try to keep that out of my brain. Actually on the way here, I saw somebody who just died from that and I it made me weak and I was just like, Oh man, I was getting like that, you know, that weak feeling, you know, like when you like hit like a like a like an artery in your like when you hit like you hit like a like a certain nerve in your body and you feel like uh weak, you know. I don't know if you ever felt like that, but that's how I felt. Just hearing about that, it freaks me out. So you're afraid of cancer? <laughs> yeah, and, definitely. And and, and 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 um and growing up I was afraid of I thought I had AIDS. I thought I I thought I, there's a lot of weird things I I was scared about getting AIDS, you know, or I was scared about getting C or I scared about getting a brain tumor. Like I would go to the doc every time my mom would take me to the doctors, I would like I would they have to check, you know, like, okay, which Aaron what's wrong with Aaron now? Like, you know, like, well, Harry thinks he has a brain tumor now. You know, it's always a pediatric C, you know, there's always something, you know. But that's just my yeah, that's just me overthinking a lot of situations. Does your family kind of understand it and, and uh work with it? Yes or, and or is it frustrating. No. Very frustrating. It's frustrating for my my brothers my my brother is frustrating for my mom because it makes things very um, difficult for her because I'm constantly I'm constantly you know like she calls me the drama queen pretty much like you worry about you freak out over everything pretty much which is true <laughs> for go over everything pretty much I will I, I you know if I saw you know so if I it's like someone sneezed and they had you know, and they had C's and they had the you know the c word I would be like I would all I would be thinking like well crap that's that her that stuff in her system has gotten inside me meaning that possibly there's a chance that this stuff could grow inside me now you know that's how that's what my brain that's what my brain thinks like it goes into it goes you know are, are there things that make it better or worse um opening up about it makes it better <laughs> that's what I've been recently doing I've been opening up about about everything to be honest to my mom, well, I a lot, a lot of things like I, I here's a problem. Growing up, I hid a lot of stuff from my doctors, my mom. I was just scared to think what they were gonna say. Growing up, I had more. There was a lot of compulsives of like I wouldn't, you know, there's more of like um, germulated stuff. Like I, like I'm always trying to give me like I want to eat my mom's food. I want to eat food if you had gray hair. I want to, you know, just things like that. I would not. Um, I would keep myself. You know, from I would keep myself separated from my family. They would be in the living room watching TV, and I would be in the dining room because I wouldn't want to be by them. I would want to be doing my own thing, you know. And they would be like, "Well, come in and join us." I'm like, "I don't want to join you guys. It, the, the the couch is disgusting. There's dog, there's there's been dogs on that couch, and it's gross. And I don't want to be around you guys because I don't want to touch anyone. And I'd rather sit here and watch TV from the dining room while you guys are in the living room." Yep. Hmm. Do you have any friends? I have a few friends. I have a few friends. I they understand what you're going through. Yes, they have a few friends. They are with me, and they try to they talk to me, and they understand me. And then you know, one of my friends said it takes a special person to be around Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Does I know good, and, and I like that. It's not it's embarrassing in a way, but at the same time, I'm realizing there's no you know as I get older, I realize there's no there's no change. You can't do anything about it really, besides try to do your best. Do, do you feel like what you went through uh, with your biological family may have caused any of this um well my my, my psychologist thinks that my, my psychologist thinks that it's a lot it's a lot for a young person to yeah go a lot my psychologist thinks that the stuff from the past stuff that well my, my my social worker actually actually brought this up she said the stuff from your from your past even the smell of the weather will trigger the stuff that you don't even remember from that past you know cause there's so much trauma there 
just watching, you know, just watching it, but also having it to you, and you're so, you're so little, all that stuff won't even, like, it, it won't, like, you won't, you won't remember it, but it'll be there, which is, like, I think, what's, I think is very, you know, it, it happens to, you know, when you go through that, I pass, I mean, I don't know directly, correctly, but of everything. What is your general, like, perception of the world are you are you just scared all the time or do you, do you see, the world, <laughs> see the world as a beautiful place i see i definitely paranoid a lot <laughs> definitely paranoid a lot it's very i'm very hard to trust people i have a very 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 i don't trust a lot of people um and i try to trust people and then i the thing is about and i think that and that's mo i think it's mostly because of my problem because the problem is i <laughs> It's like when someone, okay, so it's like when someone's laughing, I don't, it's hard for me to tell if they're laughing at me or with me. So it's like, it's, and then if you find out later they're laughing at you, you feel like, you feel like crap, like dang. Huh? And, and I mean, so it's like you, it's like that, that makes things, that causes more problem. It, it build, that stuff builds up in you kind of. And that's, that's another part about, you know, that's another part of, you know, it makes things, I guess, you know, it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully it makes sense. Does it? Yeah, it does. Okay. It does. Um, do you have any regrets in your life? Any things you wish you had handled differently, or? Huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of regrets. Yeah, I, I wish I handled. I handled. I wish I would handle a lot of things differently. The thing is, is that it's. I don't know because I feel like everything happens for reasons in a way. Like everything is supposed to happen. If you like, you know, but at the same time, because if you don't, if if certain things don't happen, you won't ever learn. And that's what that's that, so. If any mistakes I made in the past is because I it's me learning. Are there are there things that you said or did that that you were you know you maybe you hurt someone's feelings or you you pushed away a friend without it without intending to do that? Is that the kind of stuff that sometimes you regret? Um. Yes and no. I push a lot of people away. A lot of people away. Are, are you able to control that behavior in the future and not do it again, or is it just something that is going to happen anyway? I think for me is something that I, it's hard because it sticks in my brain. <laughs> it's so, like, so the OCD almost exactly. I don't know. I don't know what it, to be honest. So it's like, well, if something happens to me or something happens, it, 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 a movie plays in my head over and over and over it's, and over and over. It's almost like over. the OCD exacserbates your autism. Yeah. Well, it's like a movie plays in my head over and over until I can get, until I get the information out. And then once I get the, and once I tell the information out, it usually doesn't, it usually is not always you know, it's like my mom would say, Aaron, you need to just keep things to yourself. But you know, she doesn't directly actually say that, but it's like, she kind of like says like, you know, like you don't need to, the whole world doesn't need to know about your issues, right? But the problem is it's like, they don't, she's right. But at the same time, it's like, if something's on my mind, I, I need to say it. <laughs> it will bother me until I say it. That's the problem with me. It's like, hey, well, I will think, keep thinking, 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 thinking until I eventually get it out. And then once I get out, I feel that relief, and then you know, so like that's that's the problem. You know, it's like I need to get it out. I need to get things out. If I feel that things need to be said, I say it. I can't keep it inside me. Definitely something that happened. If it happened to me, I can't keep it inside me. I have to get it out because it will. It just damages me inside until I get it out. That's the OCD. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <it's, laughs> it seems like they're, 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 those two kind of work hand in hand to take your life down. Yes, a lot of things have been locked down, but I think that's that's unless I'm learning. I'm learning uh, as I go out, as I'm going, as as things go on. I'm learning and learning and learning and learning. Are are you imp are you improving your behavior? Or not improving, but are, are you changing your behavior? Um, I'm changing my behavior. Are, are you able to control it? I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. To be honest, where, where, where are you living now? Me? Yeah. I am. Huh? I am. I kind of go back and forth. So I, I was staying in Ohio. I was, so I was living out here in Los Angeles. I got it. I, um, I couldn't pay. I, my mental health got, my mental health got very, very bad. And I wasn't, you know, I was just, I couldn't, I couldn't function anymore. I feel like, and I had to get help. I couldn't, I, I got meta, I think LA care out here, and, but I couldn't get the help I needed. And my mom wanted me to come down, but I, I was afraid to come to, down to Ohio because Ohio, well, first of all, we got to worry about a plane. I don't like to fly. Um, I learned to fly alone, definitely. So, um, once I got to, you know, I was seeing a therapist out here in, in LA who talked about my, my stuff in Ohio, why, why, why Ohio was contaminated. 
Ohio is, is you know, it, in the Ohio is, is contaminated to many reasons. Um, so it got, I, I needed. And oh, I, Ohio is contaminated? Oh, was. It was contaminated. Was contaminated. Yes. I, but now I'm back. I went there and I'm back now. Like, I, I you know, I, I mean, I, you know I'm saying I, I was, I, I got, I'll explain it. So I, I was, I went, I went, I haven't been to Ohio since 2000 and what, 19, um, because of, it was contaminated. Um, with what? Well, I mean, I'll get to that point. <laughs> um, I was seeing a therapist out here that was, I was talking about my issues and, and so you kind of got to the, to the, to the point where it's like, okay, you know, you, and I told her what, why, what was going on. And then she was like, okay, you know, you know, we, you know, we did breathing techniques and stuff like that. And then just me opening up to her helped me. And then eventually as you know, time went on, I was like, well, one, you need to come to Ohio. I'm like, I can't because you know, your house is contaminated. Ohio is, I mean, just, just being in Ohio is, is going to be hard for me. Um, but as my mental health got really, really bad, I had pretty much no choice. Rent was stacking up. Everything was stacking up. I was getting worse and worse and worse. And then, um, I was like, okay, I have no choice but to go to Ohio. So eventually, I, my brother Anthony, from that you know, lives in Ohio, he came, picked me up on the air. Like he came on the airplane, came to from Cleveland to LAX, and picked me up, and then went back to Ohio with me. And and then I got in my mom's car, which was difficult for me, of course. And then I've been staying at my brother's house for brother's house for a while until they got pretty much okay Aaron we didn't think Aaron would be here this long he's very hard to live with he leaves messes everywhere he puts clothes in the cabinet and um he always has to have a sheet on the couch before he sits on it so you know that got irritating <laughs> and then after that so I started so my mom's friend who stayed with her was also homeless and then she lived in a governor housing place so I end up staying with her sometimes. So I had to go back to my, uh, you know, this is actually this, this is how things are now still actually. So I, I go to my brother's house and the, the, the governor house and back and forth until my brother gets to like, okay, we need a break from you. Not just a break from you, just a break because we have, a, you know, from the situation, you know, we need time to have a family. So then I go to the, the, I go to the governor housing place and then I go back and forth, you know, and when I was, you know, I was, so I, that's what I've been doing for the last six months, pretty much. Um, and then trying to get the encouragement to go to my mom's house was my mom's house was contaminated and took a lot of, it took a lot of, you know, you know, and I eventually then that six months more actually to the end of the six months, since I've came back to LA here, I'm, as I'm sitting here right now, they, um, I eventually, uh, went to my mom's house and I, that's, and that's, and I won't sit in my mom's house. I won't, I, I won't sit on any furniture. I will just, I won't touch the doorknobs. I will use my my feet, they touch the door and I, I'll open it with my shoes, whatever. I, I won't touch anything inside the house, but me just being, being, me being inside the house has, has almost fixed, not, I can't say it fixed my OCD, but it made things a lot more relaxed to me. Cause that was like the, that was like me, you know, me going to my childhood house, things that any mistakes I've made in there or anything that made me feel gross or anything, it was all there. And I realized like, if I can go to my mom's house, you know, cause you know, I mean, it all took steps. Like, you know, Ohio first, you know, going to my brother, my brother Anthony's house to my mom's house, all his steps, you know, and because what was happening was like, even my, my brother, Sean went to my mom's house and went to LA, you know, I walked from my, wore the same shoes from my mom's house to LA. I would know that, oh, yeah, those are the same shoes that went to mom's house and you touch this ground here. So now this ground is contaminated. You know, or, you know, I can't walk around this ground until it rains, you know, or now that I touched where you walked, I had to throw my shoes away. So it was actually time I threw my shoes away because I walked where he walked, you know. So that, that, that OCD side of me would, would, um, would, uh, would make things very, very difficult. <laughs> very, it was like a long, I had a lot of lists, you know, and, it, and, that's, and that's another thing too, because like my girlfriend who lives out here, well, okay, my I, I don't know if she's my girlfriend or not. It's a very complicated situation right now. But she was like, you can stay with, you can stay with, you can, can you, you can come stay with me. You know, you have to pay, but you have to come stay with me. Okay. But then I'm like, okay, but you can't do your rituals. You can't put clothes in the cabinet. You can't do this. You can't do that. That's the problem. You know, 
because we were, you know, me living, me staying, when we were living at the, the 1453 Tamron Avenue address on, um, in East Hollywood, I would have a lot of rituals. I'd put everything in certain spots, you know, I'd put my, you know, clothes up here, I'd put my towel up here, I'd put my clothes in the cabin up here where the dishes go, I'd, you know, I would, I would have all these rules and rituals, you know, and I, you know, so, you know, so that's the, that would make very, things very, very difficult for anyone probably, you know, but that was very annoying. So it's kind of hard to live with me in that, in that aspect. What's your biggest fear now? Like long-term? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I don't I think and you're afraid of things like cancer and, and well yes but I think I, I think that now it's kind of like I'm scared that I'm not going to be able to be able to get into a better position <laughs> I'm it's like I I feel like every time I try it doesn't work it doesn't work every time I try it's mm-hmm. like everything I, I it's like I go and then bam I just fall down like I, I it's like it's a constant, it's well, like what's, constant. What's your what's your greatest strength what's your favorite quality about yourself um, I think I am creative. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, creative. I'm sure I, you're. I'm sure there's something that excels. Yeah, creative. because of be, almost because of all the uh, limitations you have. Yes. Well, I I'm very creative. I know that. I think so, at least. I think that I can get things done when I, when I need to get things done when it involves like material stuff, like you know, like learning a skateboard trick. I can get it done. I will go all out until I land that trick. Same thing with writing. If I if I'm writing a book, I have to get it done. So it's like stuff like that. Oh, if I'm you know if I'm you know if I'm working on a project, I have to get it done. I will get it done. But if I'm but that that that's the things I can excel in. But when it comes down to just life stuff, that's the problem. That's that's where I or interacting, put me in a room with a bunch of people. It's not gonna always be you know people are not, are not gonna want to be around me. They're going like, this kid's weird or this kid's why does he say that? Why is he it seems like, you know, he says whatever he wants, but it's not really like that. It's like, I just say what's on my mind and I don't have, a, and I was told I have a filter, which mm-hmm. makes things very difficult because I kind of just speak and I'm very blunt, I guess you would call it. I'm very, I just go straight to the point with me. It's like, I will just tell you. So it's like, you know, it's in that, that's the problem. You know, that's the problem that I have too, that I'm, I need to work on is it comes off as impolite. Yes. But people, it's like. Yes, but it's like I need to learn how to not be straight f- forward to people. You know, like not be so. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's it's it's, it's hard to. You got to learn to be two faced like the rest of us. No, <laughs> I don't. I can't do that. It's very hard for me to do that, actually. Mm. Um. Yeah. And Aaron, Aaron, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your twenty-seven years? <laughs> I got to be careful who I surround myself with. That's one thing I think that's on learning. I got to be very, very careful who I, who I, um, who I'm around. That's, that's, that, that's why, you know, that's why one of my biggest things I got to be very like, that's why I try to keep my, well, I've learned to keep my, you know, not just do anything. I got to very be, that's, that's, that's hard though, because it's it's like when you you don't have a, you just want to do something, you know, you want to do something, but you, but you, everyone tells me not to do it but my mind tells me the opposite i want to do it so it's like so it's like you know i ha- i think differently everyone else it's like you know I, i'll have all my friends or my mom my family say do not do that do not do that i'm like but i see but i think if i did this it would explain things better but it's like yeah but you don't understand the, the what could happen to you if you do that but like but like yes but i need to explain things better you know i if i don't say anything then then everyone sees it this way, but I need to sew it this way. You know, you know what I mean? It's very, it's very, you know what I mean? So it's, it's very complicated. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Aaron, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah. I wish you lots of luck. Yeah, thank You're you. You're still a young man. Maybe, uh, maybe something will, you'll figure out something to work around this. Yeah, eventually. Because I see you have some great qualities too, so I'm sure you'll figure something out. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Yes.